welcome to another edition of Jazzology, presented by Savage Content. I'm your host, Willard Jenkins. We're here alternating Fridays, giving two jazz fans the opportunity to compete against each other for a chance to win $100. Each contestant will be asked a question worth two points. If they're unable to answer correctly, their opponent will have the chance to steal the question for one point. We will ask 10 questions, and at the end of the 10 questions, the person with the lowest score will get a bonus question for the opportunity to tie the score. If they're successful, the game will go to sudden death. Each contestant will take turns trying to answer the multiple choice questions until we have a winner. Let's meet this week's contestants. Our reigning champion from our past episodes, our past six episodes, in fact, is Joe Petricelli, the executive director of the Jazz Foundation of America, whose responsibilities include program development, fundraising, production, and financial management. Joe, what's the, what's the next major event for the Jazz Foundation? That's a good question. The, the, we've got a few on the horizon, but Big event that we're planning on is uh, our gala, A Great Night in Harlem at the Apollo Theater, which will be March 30th, 2023. We haven't held a gala at the Apollo since 2019. So yeah, I was getting ready to say, yeah, this is a return. This is a big return to form, and it's a special year because uh, we're honoring our vice chair and our longtime executive director, my predecessor, uh, Wendy Oxenhorn. Uh, so we're very excited about that. And um, we're still putting together the show, but um, as always, it'll be a great mix of jazz and blues and R&B and funk and roots and, and everything kind of in that, in our musical family. Well, please give my love to Wendy. Thank you, I will. And today's contender, is none other than Mark Ruffin, a jazz broadcaster, record producer, writer, and Grammy Award nominee. Mark is the program director and on-air host for Sirius XM's Real Jazz Channel and author of the highly entertaining 2020 book, Bebop Fairy Tales. Tell us a bit about Bebop Fairy Tales, Mark. Uh, Bebop Fairy Tales is a book, actually the long title is Bebop Fairy Tales and Historical Fiction Trilogy on Jazz, Intolerance, and Baseball. And in the title, it says that there are three stories that intertwine jazz and baseball and two of the stories and intolerance. Really, I think the theme of the book is why can't we live together and enjoy jazz and baseball? All right. And that's what we're about here at Jazzology. Uh, although maybe not quite the baseball part, but that's the word about <laughs> it. Yeah, All right, you guys ready? Yes, sir. Okay, Joe, you're up first as the reigning champ. Joe, which of the following contemporary jazz musicians are not from Houston, Texas? Is it A, James Francis, B, Paul Carr, C, Helen Sum, or D, Jeremy Pelt? Wow. Um, that's that's a tough one. Um, I believe that A, James, and C, Helen are from Houston. And, man, um, I was going to say... Um, if I had an opportunity to plug it, how much I love Jeremy Pelt's two, two volumes of uh, interviews that he's done uh, under the title Grio. I think, I, I can't think of where Jeremy's from. I'm going to guess D, Jeremy Pelt. That is correct. The correct answer yeah. is D, Jeremy Pelt. Now, you know, Joe, I thought I was throwing you a curveball putting Paul Carr in there, and you didn't mention his name, but apparently you're familiar with Paul Carr as well, huh? I just, you just, I just made an educated <laughs> guess. <laughs> Paul, 
Paul Carr. I'm, no, I, 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 I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not hip uh, to Paul Carr really. I Paul probably Carr should, I should is, be. Is, is Paul Carr is one of DC's finest. He's a tenor saxophonist and he's the producer of the annual Mid Atlantic Jazz Festival in DC. Gotcha. Mark, you ready? I'm ready. Dizzy Gillespie, John Coltrane, and Jimmy Heath all have roots in the Carolinas, but largely grew up in which city? Was it A, New York, B, Chicago, C, Philadelphia, or D, Detroit? You know, um, that's pretty easy. Um, if you had mentioned which Carolina, because one of them were born in South Carolina, that would have threw me off. But the first family of jazz in Philadelphia, the Heath brothers, so it's Philadelphia. That is correct, Mark. It is Philadelphia. And you're right. And that's the only easy one you're going to get today. <laughs> <laughs> you ready, Joe? Yes. All right. In addition to founding the Newport Jazz Festival, NEA Jazz Master George Ween also founded which of the following festivals? A, the Monterey Jazz Festival. B, Juan Le Pan in France, which would be the Antibes Jazz Festival. C, New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival or D, the Boston Jazz Festival. Which of those festivals did George Ween found besides Newport? Okay. Well, this could be one of these Jazzology Jenkins specials where there's a couple of correct answers, <laughs> um, but I don't know all of them. I, I am confident that George did in 1969 found the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. See. Wow, and, and I mean that's why this guy's the champion, Mark. He, yeah. he, even, he even gave the year. We didn't ask the year, but he gave the year, and that is correct. George, am... George Ween was one of the founders of the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. I always had to give my dear friend Allison some some credit for that. Allison Miner was one of the found was, was, was co-founder, along with Quint Davis and George Ween. Mark. I am officially scared of Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, name the alto saxophone player who played with Art Blakey, Charles Mingus, and Thelonious Monk. Was it A, Lou Donaldson? B, Jackie McLean? C, John Handy? Or D, Phil Woods. Which of those alto saxophone players played with Blakey, Mingus, and Mo? Wow, you were not kidding about that was the only easy one. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not John Handy or Phil Woods. Um, and Lou was definitely a messenger at one point in his life. I don't recall Lou with with Monk, but I don't recall McLean with Monk either. And Mingus. I'm going to go with Jackie McLean. That is correct. Oh, we got guys, these guys are batting a thousand today. Ooh. Jackie McLean did indeed perform with Blakey's Messengers, Charles Mingus, and Thelonious Monk. Mm. Joe. Joe, name the jazz vocalist whose late husband was the lead architect of the Smithsonian Museum of African American History and Culture. Would that be A, Dee Dee Bridgewater, B, Nina Freelon, C, Renee Marie, or D, Cassandra Wilson? This is, uh, I'm, I'm stumped. I'm stumped by this one. Um, and a fascinating piece of history. Um, 
Is it B, Nina Freelon? Wow, Joe. I, that, that's why Joe's the champ, Mark. That's why Joe's the champ. Yes, it is Ooh. B, Nina Freelon. Nina Ooh. Freelon's late husband, Phil Freelon, was the lead architect wow. of the Smithsonian Museum of African American History and Culture. All right. Jazzology is brought to you by Savage Content, an exciting new purveyor of quality music programming. From podcasts to live performances and interviews, Savage Content offers an eclectic mix of curated entertainment programming for all music lovers. Be sure to follow Savage Content on social media to hear about our latest releases. And now it's time to ask our contestants our favorite question. Savage Content has hosted two essay contests asking contestants how they fell in love with jazz. And in fact, Mark, your colleague Andromeda Toure won the most recent contest in Savage Content, asking, uh, responding to this question. So for each episode of Jazzology, we'd like to pose that question to our contestants. Mark, how did you fall in love with jazz? Uh, much like Andromeda, it was by osmosis. I, I grew up in a record store on the west side of Chicago in the uh, late 50s, early 60s. And back then, um, my parents listened to everything. You could be, it could be Miles Davis, followed by the Flamingos, followed by Motown, followed by a piece of classical music. But um, one day, um, my mom was in the store and it was being robbed and Miles Davis was on the box 45 single, if, if I were a bell, where he says, I'll play it now and tell you what it is later. And I was scared. I was, a, I was man, five or six, but it's my first memory in life. And when the guy left the store and that guy kept coming back, I'll play it now, tell you what it is later. I wanted to find out who that guy was and I've been Miles Davis ever since. And that's mm. what led me into jazz. Now, uh Joe, you've asked, answered this question a million times. I was going to say. <laughs> tell, us, tell us what continues to stimulate you about today's jazz. Yeah. No, well, as as Mark and, and everyone can appreciate, it's a, it's a lifelong uh, love affair. So um, there's always a different answer to this. And actually, I mentioned earlier these, uh, these books by Jeremy Pelt, Grio <laughs> Volume 1 and Grio Volume 2. And I would say that in addition to going out and hearing live music as much as I can, and I saw an incredible set at the Vanguard last Thursday with Christian McBride subbing for Bill Frizzell, who had a COVID uh, positive test, uh, but Bill playing with Jonathan Blake and um, Gregory Tardy, or sorry, Christian playing with Jonathan Blake and Gregory Tardy. I'd say go see live music, listen to the classic records. I love to. You know, when I don't have the opportunity to hang out and, and just check in with musicians, reading interviews with musicians, I think is one of the things that um, just keeps me sort of um, informed and you know j just uh, learning more and more about the music. I think there's no better better way to, uh, to study the, the form than just to listen to the stories by the artists. And Jeremy Pelt's a great sort of contemporary um, proponent of these interviews, and he modeled his book on Art Taylor's Notes and Tones, which is another classic. So that's that helps me keep up and stay in love. Well, Joe, you know, I, I have to chime in here myself uh, because uh, one of our previous answers was Jackie McLean. And I had an opportunity last night to hear a wonderful set of uh, drummer Willie Jones III leading a band at Dizzy's playing the music of Jackie mm -hmm. McLean. And, and and it was great. I really enjoyed that. And you're right. Uh, live live music, the live atmosphere is life affirming. That's for certain. All right. You ready, Mark? Yeah. You won't believe this. A fire alarm just went off in this building. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I know I'm late to the game, and I know you guys may be time crunch, but I want how Joe. What did you know? I wasn't here for the first win. How did you fall in love with jazz briefly? Just oh. <laughs> you're such a great service to our to our music. I want to know how. Oh, thanks so much, Mark. It was it was really through one of my you know one of my dear friends in high school, Austin Golding. He he came home for for a winter break uh, after having raided the uh, 
the, the record library at his school's uh, radio station. And he had a stack of, of the most sort of some really like far out avant-garde and kind of fusion-y stuff. So the major works of John Coltrane, Ornette's Free Jazz, Miles, Bitches Brew. And that I really sort of connected with that, the energy of that music and the kind of extreme nature of it and then kind of through that portal um started kind of taking in the you know the, the history of the of the art form so about age age 15 you know the sort of the gates opened and i've been all right mark you ready chasing it ever since absolutely mark the songs this bitter earth and baby you've got what it takes were two hits for which of the following singers? Mm. A, Jimmy Scott. B, Nina Simone. C, Billie Holiday. Or D, Dinah Washington. You got that look on your face like you know the answer to this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually trying to wait for the fire alarm, the false alarm. <laughs> you, you know, what's really cool about this question is, and a lot of people don't know it, but in Baby, You Got What It Takes, which is a duet between Brooke Benton and Dinah Washington, those two didn't like each other. Mm -hmm. And and during the song, there's one part of the song where she says, baby, you're stepping on my lines. And he has a smart retort. And the producer liked it so much, they kept it in the song. Now, it's, called creative, it's called creative tension, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so Dinah Washington is your answer. That's correct. Uh, these guys are batting a thousand. Ah, that is correct. Mm. Dinah Washington had hits with This Bitter, Bitter Earth and Baby, You've Got What It Takes. Joe, name the contemporary yes. trumpeter who occasionally sings. A, Terrence Blanchard. B, Dave Douglas. C, Roy Hargrove. Or D, Nicholas Payton. Okay. Um, man, I like that question about jazz artists who have hits. Let's let's get more of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we need more hits. Um, I let's see. I've um, Seen all of the, all of the above perform, um, and you know, I don't I don't associate anyone with with vocals really. Um, in this case, I've seen uh, Nicholas Payton play trumpet. I've seen him play keys, um, and uh, you know, I'm I'm certain <laughs> he has it in him uh, to be a compelling vocalist, um, and he's he's such a great, expressive, brilliant person and artist. I'm gonna go with D, Nicholas Payton. Don't make me mad. Oh, our first wrong answer. Ooh. Now, now, now there, there was a there was a there was a little trickery, a, a little trickeration in that question, because if I had said. <laughs> Name the contemporary trumpeter who occasionally sang. You'd know who I was talking about because I was talk, dealing with past tense. Uh, but because it is on record, he's still singing. And the correct answer is C, Roy Hargrove. Every set, generally, he sang September in the Rain. Mm. So, Joe, you're down one. He, he also sang the Dizzy Gillespie tune. Oh, oh, with the big band. But but I love his voice. He was a great singer, man, actually. And, you know, I have to apologize, Mark. I didn't give you a chance to steal that point. But, Joe, you're down one. All right. I, but Mark, if Mark knew it. Mark oh, oh. It. Yeah, I think yeah, he, he, he knew it was Roy Hargrove. I could, you know, I, I, Mark's got a very expressive face. I can he tell that he knows <laughs> <laughs> but my my bad on that. Okay. Mark, who wrote the music for the 2015 film Miles Ahead about Miles Davis? Was it A, Herbie Hancock, 
B, Christian McBride, C, Jason Moran, or D, Robert Glasper? Um, what, what a great movie. You know, uh, a lot of folks had big complaints about that movie. To me, yeah, and I'm like, I'm, I'm oh, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't. We'll have that conversation another time, Mark. <laughs> Robert Glass. Robert Glasper did the music to it. It was around the same time he did when Columbia let him into the vaults to do the reimagination of Miles. So, yeah, Robert Glasper. That's correct, Robert Glasper. Joe. Yes. The Biographical Encyclopedia of Jazz was a collaboration between which two jazz critics? Was it A, Leonard Feather and Ira Gittler? B, Dan Morgenstern and Martin Williams? C, Gary Giddens and Bob Blumenthal? Or D, Martin Williams and Ira Gittler? Okay. Well, Willard, since you're at JFA HQ today, I could direct you to a bookcase where you'd find an edition of this. I know it's Ira Gittler, and I'm pretty sure it's A. Leonard Feather and Ira Gittler. That is correct. It was yeah. Leonard Feather and Ira Gittler who collaborated on the original Biographical Encyclopedia of Jazz. And then Ira Gittler put out the, the, the reprise after Leonard passed. Okay, Mark. Which of the following young singers won the Sarah Vaughn competition? Was it A, Jasmine Horn? B, Surreal Amy? C, Melody Gardot? Or D, Samara Joy? Ooh. You know, um, uh, the, the female vocalist category is in great shape these days. Um, and I think the Sarah Vaughn vocal competition had a lot to do with that. And one of the brightest stars today is Samara Joy. And that's why I would say out of those, it, it, it threw me for a minute because I had to think Jasmia, but Jasmia, I think won the monk the competition. competition. And Samara Joy won yeah. the Sarah Vaughn competition. That is correct. Yep, that is correct. Samara Joy won the Sarah Vaughn competition. And now it's time for our bonus questions. It's time for Joe to answer a bonus question to see if Joe can catch up. So Joe, who was the drummer in the 1990s band known as One For All? Was it A, Peter Erskine, B, Joe Farnsworth, C, Steve Gadd, or D, Dave Weckl? This is a tough one. Willard, you had some tricky ones a few episodes back when we were, we were talking about uh, Out of the Blue and another, another collective group. This, in this case, um, you know, I'm going to rule out Gad and Erskine and even Weckl. I mean, I, I, I think of them all as kind of coming up earlier in the 90s. I know this wasn't necessarily, uh, you know, Farnsworth's first band, but I do believe it's B. Joe Farnsworth. That is correct. And, and Joe has tied the score. And now... We go into sudden death, and you're up first, Mark. You ready for sudden death? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Name the baritone saxophone player who played in the band mm. that played with Billie Holiday on her famous rendition of Fine and Mellow for CBS television in 1957. Was that A, Harry Kearney, B, Joe Temperley, C, Jerry Mulligan, or D, Serge Shaloff? 
um, man, at first I thought I had it in my mind's eye until you said Harry Carney. I'm like, whoa, was it Harry Carney? But I'm going to go with my mind's eye because um, I can see Billy singing and Jerry Mulligan standing next to her. So I'm going with Jerry Mulligan. There you go, Mark. That is correct. And, <laughs> and Mark has knocked Joe Petricelli out of the box. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations, Mark Ruffin, on your win. And if anyone watching would like to become a contestant on Jazzology, we'd love to hear from you. Follow us on social media, at Savage Content. That's at Savage C-N-T-N-T. -T, and send a message letting us know. You must be 18 years old or older. Thanks so much to both our now vanquished champion, Joe Petricelli, and to our new champion, Mark Ruffin. And to Congrats, everyone. Congrats, Mark. I'm, I'm going to listen to some uh, Roy Hargrove. I'm going to go watch <laughs> Roy Hargrove And to singing. everyone who joined us today, remember, you can check out, check us out every other Friday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you miss the show live, you can find the archive on our Jazzology YouTube channel. As you depart, what words of wisdom, Joe, would you have for future Jazzology contestants? Uh, just uh, keep uh, be, be good to the music and the music will be good to you, to paraphrase or quote Todd, Todd Barkin. Todd Barkin, yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Mark. I, I got to quote Todd Barkin too. Swing safely. There you go. Mark, what's, uh, the, what's the next live jazz performance you're planning on attending? Wow. Uh, the Detroit Jazz Festival. Um, man, I'm really looking forward to Chucho Valdez's uh, big uh, piece that he's done with John Beasley and Hilario Duran. They did Europe first, and now they're doing America, and I'm going to see it in Detroit and in Monterey. I'm really looking forward to it. All right, and I'll catch you in Monterey. That's right. Thank you so much, Joe and Mark, and we'll see you all next time on the next right, edition thank you. of Jazzology. Thank you. Live long and prosper. <laughs> in, in honor of Michelle Nichols. <laughs> <laughs>